Hi, welcome to this new video about messages exchange in the SDD core and B2B schemes. The message we consider today is the PAX3 version 2. Before presenting the PAX3, I will first remind you the overview of all the messages exchange in the SDD core and B2B schemes so that we will be able to locate the PAX3 and the parties which exchange it. Then I will present you the PAX3 identity card. What is the name of the PAX3? When was it born? And what is its place of residence? Why the PAX3 is not enough? Here, we will see why the other messages are needed in the schemes. Then we will talk about the PAX3 message structure and building blocks. At the end of this presentation, we will highlight few differences between ISO 2022 and SEPA requirements in the PAX3 message. Let's begin with the overview of the messages exchanged in the SDD core and B2B schemes that we find in the implementation guidelines documents. The PAX3 is highlighted in green color. It is sent by the creditor bank to the debtor bank. The direction of messages in payments matters. The PAX3 is always sent by the creditor bank. So if you work on receiving the PAX3, then you must be on the debtor bank side. Pretty important to have that in mind when we work on payment project. As you can see, there are other messages exchanged in the interbank space. We look at each of them in detail in future videos. For now, let's move to the PAX3 identity call. The PAX3 is called Financial Institution to Financial Institution Customer Direct Debit. So it is a message exchange in the interbank space, either between two banks or between a bank and a clearing system. Note that it is called Customer Direct Debit because end customers and not only financial institutions are involved in this message. SEPA uses the version 2, so the PAX 3 1.2, but the version 7 is already available. How can we find that out? Well, let's go to the ISO 2022 website. So here's the home page of the ISO 2022 website. Let's go to the catalog of messages in payments. What do we find here? Before we look for the PAX3, let's expand. If we look for the PAX3, okay, so you see, we have the version 7 of the PAX3, but in SEPA, the version 2 is used. So how can I find that version 2 on the website? For that, we need to go here to the ISO 2022 message archive. Let's click on it. ISO 2022 message archive. Let's make a search again. PAX3. Okay, that's the version one of what we are looking for. And now we have the version two. So this is the message used in SEPA, direct debit schemes. And as you see, the ISO 2022 is already on version seven. So it is five version eight of SEPA. Let's go back to the presentation. The, the PAX3 version 1.2 was born on March 30th, 2009 and put into its place of residence, the message definition report. The file name is Payments Maintenance 2009.pdf. That file can be downloaded from the ISO 2022 website. In SEPA, Additional rules than the ones requiring ISO 2022 documents are provided and banks must implement them in order to join the schemes. The SEPA direct debit is a pool payment. The PAX3 message is therefore used to pull the funds from the receiving bank to the sending bank. When the creditor bank sends the PAX3, it is like it is saying to the debtor bank, please, Debit your customer whose account information is available in the payment and credit my account with the corresponding amount. But the real movement of money happens only after clearing and settlement. Therefore, the PAX3 must have a settlement date. It is the date where the funds transfer is done from the debtor bank to the creditor bank. Why the PAX3 
is not enough. Remember, the PAX tree is used to move funds from the debtor to the creditor bank. So the main purpose is to debit the debtor account and credit the creditor account. And that happens most of the time. The PAX tree is by far the message with the highest volumes in the interbank space. Why then do we need other messages? In an ideal world, where nothing unwanted would happen during the processing of the PAX tree messages, the other messages will not be needed at all. But we know that it is not the right way of thinking, don't we? That is because there is no process without exception. Indeed, many exceptions can happen during the processing of the direct debit, either at debtor bank or at creditor bank. When an exception occurs, banks should be able to handle it properly and provide the correct information to their peers or customers. The other messages in the interbank space are used for exception handling. Oh, the exceptions. Our lives will be much easier in the payment world without them. One message is required to pull the funds, but many other messages are needed to handle the exceptions. For example, the PAX4, the PAX7 that are used for specific purposes. As I said before, we will come back to those messages in future videos. Now let's look at the PAX3 message structure. The PAX3 message is composed of two building blocks, pretty similar to the PAX8, the SEPA credit transfer. We have the group header and the direct debit transaction information. The group header block is mandatory and present ones. It contains elements such as message identification, creation date and time, interbank settlement date, and so on. The direct debit transaction information block is mandatory and repetitive. It contains elements related to the debit and credit side of the transaction, such as creditor or creditor agent, debtor agent, instruction ID, end to end ID, remittance information, and so on. Many are not aware that the direct debit transaction information contains elements related to debit side as well as to the credit side of the transaction. They think that credit side information appears once and debit side information is repeated like in the paying aid, but that's not the case. So it is good. It is good to keep this structure in mind. It can help you to understand a lot of things particularly related to the payment engines. The final slide is about differences between ISO 2022 and SEPA requirements for the PAX3. To understand the differences, consider this. ISO 2022 standards are for the whole world, but SEPA standards are only for the SEPA countries. If we take the total interbank settlement amount, for example, and see it here, we see that only euro is allowed in SEPA, while in the ISO 2022, any currency can be used. Another interesting thing is the creditor account information that we find here. In SEPA payments, it must be provided in IBAN format. The creditor agent must be provided in big format. When you read implementation guidelines, pay attention to the SEPA usage rules. They tell you what is specific to SEPA. In the recent implementation guidelines, differences are highlighted pretty well. You just need to be aware that they exist so that you can refer to them when necessary. That's the end of this presentation. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video. If you found the presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to pementor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and video. Take care and see you soon on the channel.